Warning, this content is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This video is brought to you by First Detachment Nutrition. Battle tested, expert formulated. Use discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. All right, folks, it's Big Paul here today, and we have another anabolic q and I got some fun stuff queued up for you. We're going to talk about blood tests for PED users, Baldur's Gate, that's a good topic, pasta in the off-season for a carb source, and NPP versus DECA, and a lot of other stuff, and we're going to dig into all that in just one second. All right, first question I have here is from Mo Min Magal Ged 396, something like that. I don't know. It's a mouthful. Can you detail the must blood test for PED users? All right, so we I have an entire video I did with Dr. Todd about blood work for PED users. You might want to check that one out. It goes into detail on what tests to get and which ones are skewed. But I can kind of give you the 30,000-foot view of things. I peel the layer of the onion back. The thing that we want to be aware of is our health. The things that we want to be aware of is our health. And more specifically, the stuff that kills bodybuilders. And if you look at it, it's typically cardiovascular-related events. So we want to make sure we're keeping tabs on our cardiovascular health. Kidney disease is another big thing you'll see that gets bodybuilders as they get older. Uh, some other things, you know, that we want to keep an eye on. Liver health, although I have never personally heard of somebody dying of liver failure that's a bodybuilder. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but I think people get panicky about the liver health stuff. The liver is pretty resilient. If your kidneys are fried, there's no coming back from, from that. Usually it's kidney transplant or dialysis. You're pretty much screwed. If you have a heart attack or a clogged artery, that's a major issue. If you have an aneurysm, there's a good chance you're going to die. <laughs> so I am more concerned about the stuff that's going to kill me immediately. Hormonal stuff, guys get obsessed with checking their testosterone levels while they're in gear. I just think it's a waste of your money. Testosterone level tests are expensive unless you want to see if your gear is real. I don't see any point in testing your testosterone level while you're on gear. Estradiol, things that might cause symptoms, the hormonally related things we might want to check. Estradiol and estradiol sensitive tests would be something good to make sure that you have. Uh, prolactin if you're taking 19 nors although i rarely see elevated prolactin from 19 nors it does happen it's uncommon uh, almost never people people take caber and things like that unnecessarily when they don't need to so you may want to check prolactin if you're having s I impotence issues sex drive issues things like that that is something you may want to check uh, thyroid is important to keep tabs of Glucose, and not so much the glucose levels, that's just a snapshot in time. We want to check our A1C to make sure that there's no insulin resistance. A lipid panel where we are doing the various lipids, LDL, HDL, the triglycerides are sort of a canary in the coal mine. For insulin resistance, if your body's not metabolizing carbohydrates correctly, a lot of times you'll see you start spewing out lipids and your your triglycerides will sign your triglycerides will raise ldl and hdl hdl is always going to be suppressed on anybody who using peds currently it's just a matter of how bad the hdl is suppressed ldl we want to keep that as low as we possibly can ldl is usually something that's a result of eating a crappy diet eating high saturated foods a lot of you know, guys are not going to want to hear this but the keto and carnivore warriors, a lot of times I'll see, have crazy high LDLs. And high LDL combined with PED use is bad news. Because you're going to have suppressed HDL, I just would not roll the dice. If you're natty, then it's you're, you might be okay. Now, keep in mind with cholesterol, high cholesterol doesn't necessarily mean that you're at risk of a cardiovascular event. But people that have cardiovascular events tend to have high cholesterol. 
So just something to keep in mind. Blood work's not going to show things like enlarged heart, uh, a you know, in a bulging aorta, things like that. So you may want to have diagnostic testing to make sure that your heart is healthy. Might be a good idea to see a cardiologist every couple of years and get all that shit checked out as well on top of having blood panels done. I'm trying to think of other things that I would check. The, the liver stuff, I just don't get too consumed with. With the, uh, I mean, it, if there's a problem, then yeah, maybe. Kidney health, EGFR readings are often skewed on blood panels. You'll see BUN is going to be elevated from just eating a lot of protein. Creatinine is going to be elevated from lifting weights and taking creatine and if to a certain degree. If you have, from what I've seen, if you, if you get above 1.4, 1.5, then there's something else going on. You need to take a corrective action at that point. I usually have guys get a cystatin C test as well, just to because the traditional way of calculating EGFR is kind of crappy. And then, and then if you have an issue with your cystatin C test, on top of that, then you probably it's probably time to go see a nephrologist. But those at a high level. I would combine the blood work with periodic diagnostic testing of your heart. So those are the two things. Blood work, you can. I usually get blood work done every three months or so, and or unless I have some sort of uh, symptom or side effect that I want to get checked out. Other than that, I just roll with it. All right. Next question I have here is from Eric James seven eight one nine. He asks, "Why is pasta?" not on the recommended food list for bodybuilders and a bodybuilding diet. You can eat some pasta here and there. I will have pasta in the off season now and then, but I challenge you to try to eat a thousand grams of carbs from pasta and let me know how your stomach feels. You'll understand very quickly why pasta is not <laughs> included in the eat freely foods in a bodybuilding, typical bodybuilding diet. It, the high, I, I don't think gluten is that high in pasta from what I recall, but it's just going to cause bloating. It's going to cause gut distress. It doesn't, rice seems to be the carbohydrate that digests the best and doesn't cause bloating and stomach issues. Rice, cream of rice. I, you know, a lot of oats sometimes will cause, pro guys get obsessed with oats. Oats are fine when you're dieting, not so fine in the off season when you're trying to pound down food. I think there's just no better carb source than rice in the off season. Even potatoes are really hard to get down. And I've seen guys become hyperkalemic from eating too many potatoes. Pasta is just not a great choice if you want to push down a lot of food. On contest prep, I would stay away from it completely because we want to avoid anything that could cause any sort of potential inflammation or gut distension or bloating. It's not a good look when your belly's sticking out on stage. And a lot of times I, you know, people blame GH for stuff, but I think a lot of times it's insulin resistance, visceral fat, and just f food that's causing these dudes to get these bloated guts on stage. I take a lot of GH, and I have a 32-inch waist. I'm just saying. And I'm also old. So I don't, pa pasta is in that use it sparingly during the off-season column. I'll have, you see, I'm sure if any of you follow me on Instagram, I'll eat some pasta on a... Uh, on a high day, at the end of the high day, I'll make I'll make my meat pasta that I enjoy, and it's just something you know silly that I have on on my high day. It's it's, but I only do that like once a week, at most in the off season. I very rarely eat pasta or anything with gluten in it. It just causes too much gut issues with me. Ben Bauer eight nine one eight ask: Is there a difference over running MPP over Deca? I felt like I had more side effects on MPP than on Deca. That is highly possible that you did have more side effects on MPP just because of the speed at which it hits. It's going to hit quickly. I think it had the phenylpropionate ester has something like a 48 hour half life. I know people are going to slaughter me about the half life thing. I'm just pulling that off the top of my head, but it's a shorter half life. It's going to peak in your system quickly, and a lot of times when you have drugs, the longer esters really, really help mitigate some of the side effects that are there from building up. And you know, anybody who's run Trend and Anthe will note will state that their side effects are lower. It's because it just takes so long for it to build up, gives your body time to acclimate to it. I'm just speculating here. Whereas, like Deca, 
we're going to be at peak concentration. That guy has something, you know, depending on who you ask, somewhere between a 10, 8 to 10 day half-life. It's five half-lives for it to peak, hit peak concentration. So you're talking about like 40 to 50 days before DECA is at full concentration. It's just a slow ramp up. The trade-off is, is if you hit that 40 or 50 day mark and you have problems, your PP doesn't work and you start having mood issues or anxiety, you got to wait another 40 to 50 days for it to clear your system. Whereas with the NPP, even though it hits you quickly and you may have some side effects up front, if you need to dump it, you can dump it quickly and get off of it. It's the same thing with the trend. Uh, that's why I prefer trend ACE. It hits hard, it hits quick. If you have problems, you can get off of it. I want to be in and out with trend as quickly as possible. I, so, it's, I sort of feel that way about all 19 Norths, to be honest with you. I like to use them in spot duty. I have had anxiety problems with, with Nandrolone recently. So I don't want to be stuck with Nandrolone in my system for two months while I'm having panic attacks waiting for it to clear. I want it out in a week and a half or whatever it takes for uh, NPP to clear my system. So yes, you may not feel the side effects because it's just slowly ramping up and on, on DECA as you're having on MPP, but ultimately the underlying compound is the same thing. It's the same hormone. It does change the pharma, I think it's pharmacokinetics or ph pharma dy dynamics. I, I don't remember. Kurt can correct me on that one, but we are going to do a video, Kurt and I actually next week on Nandrolone. So we'll have some more detailed answers on this one, on that one. Joshua Kevin Perry asked me, have you played Baldur's Gate 3 yet? And if so, class re recommendations. I figured it'd help keep guys who are dieting and need a distraction from hunger. I have it pre-ordered for my PlayStation 5. I'm a Mac guy, so it's not out on the Mac yet. I am 100% going to play it if I have time. I love the old Baldur's Gate games. I am a D&D geek. I played D&D &D quite a bit when I was younger. I am a nut for RPGs. I'll probably roll a barbarian would be my guess. I usually <laughs> that fits my that fits my mentality best. I'm I'm a barbarian in life and I'm a barbarian in the fantasy world. So that's probably the route I'll go, but I am very excited for Baldur's Gate. I can't wait to play it. Everybody speaks highly of it. I know Chase, I think spent an entire week and blast it through the whole game, put 70 hours in in like eight days. So give Chase a hard time about giving up his entire life. That's why he's been MIA from social media the last week and a half is because he's been playing Baldur's Gate. Next question here is from Samuel S. Sonori 707 I think I probably slaughtered that, but it's thereabouts that sounds close to what the team looks like. Would you say being able to stick to a contest prep diet and fight through it is something that you get better at with age. I'm currently having trouble doing so. Yeah, 100%. My willpower and ability to stick to things are much better now than they were in my 20s. I don't know. I think it's an immediacy thing when you're young. I had no patience for stuff. I was an immediate gratification kind of guy. I was a perma balker in my 20s. I never could stick to a cut. I'd get about halfway through a cut and I'd be like, screw this. I'm getting small. I'm going back to I'm going back to my perma balker routine and I'm going to be a perma balker year round. So it was just idiotic to be honest with you, the way I did things when I was young, but you know, Hey, we all go through these phases. We live, we learn from it. One of the biggest lessons I can tell you with bodybuilding is trying to shortcut the process by being a perma balker or a perma cutter or half-assing things or or trying to find the secret cycle you're actually delaying your progress so it's best to just commit get through a phase suck it up suffer and you're going to make more progress in the long run by doing that i wish i'd known that or had the patience to do that when i was in my 20s i just didn't i would i would get very impatient i would get very frustrated Sometimes I just didn't like the pain and suffering that went along with it, but I think you become more tolerant of that stuff as you age. I definitely know I am. I can gut through things more now than I could when I was in my 20s. I'm better at sticking things out. I'm better at committing at things. I am better at not getting frustrated, not letting things get under my skin. 
seeing the bigger picture. I'm better at that now than I was when I was young. My friend, Mr. X1270 asked, if Arnold had never run any steroids, where do you think he would be at today? You know, I, I attribute a lot of Arnold's success, at least in the areas that he went to, to being to being on steroids. He would have never been Mr. Olympia if he hadn't used steroids. He likely would have never been a Hollywood success if he hadn't been on steroids. But I don't want to shortchange Arnold because I think Arnold's real superpower is his ability to believe in himself and to work his ass off and to not shortcut things. The guy just can't be deterred from anything. Everything that he's tried to do, he's been successful at, whether it was a governor, whether it was actor, whether it was bodybuilder. And my, my guess is he probably would have been successful in business, maybe a politician. Maybe He probably would have never left Austria if it wasn't for bodybuilding. You know, maybe he would be a billionaire in business. That that same sort of drive is required in business that not I'm not going to be denied willpower is necessary in business if you want to succeed in business. And I would guess that he probably would have had that same sort of drive regardless of whatever he applied himself to. Maybe he would have been an actor. Who knows? I think he would have been successful at anything he got into because of his mentality. The next question here is the Cyberhawk. I'm seeing a lot of bodybuilders focusing on digestive and gut health. What is your gut health routine and what do you find to be most helpful for improving digestion and gut health? I think a lot of people get hung up on these silly little elixirs that don't do a whole lot. They don't look at the high level stuff that's actually causing their gut issues. I see dudes that get consumed with taking probiotics and you know this supplement and that supplement to make their digestive health better they're basically treating the problem when they're not actually looking at what's causing the problem which a lot of times is pretty simple when it comes to bodybuilding your food choices i would start there too first i do a low fodmap diet you can look it up if you want these are These are low gas producing foods, foods that are not known not to cause stomach distress. So I start with a low FODMAP diet. Everybody makes fun of my food and my bland food. I'll tell you what, my bland food digests really well. A lot of spices, a lot of stuff that people put on their food cause digestive issues. Things like garlic, things like onion, things like hot sauces, condiments can irritate the gut and cause digestive issues. Dudes love to pound the orals in the off-season year-round. They love to take their D-ball. They love to take their Anadrol. Anadrol and D-ball absolutely destroy your gut. Pretty much any oral medication destroys your gut from what I've seen. So I would, you know, before you start looking at taking a probiotic and, and different elixirs and drinking, you know, drinking apple cider vinegar and stuff, why don't you figure out the high-level shit that's actually causing your gut problems to begin with it never made any sense to me you're just treating a symptom not actually trying to resolve the issue so i would start there first now on top of that i do do some stuff i try in the off season i'll cut it out in contest prep as i get deeper in the con into contest prep but i have a fermented greek yogurt once a day and i try to eat some sauerkraut or some fermented foods once a day as well for for the probiotic effect, I don't take a probiotic pill. If my acid reflux gets really, really bad, sometimes I have really bad acid reflux, I may take a, a proton pump inhibitor. I know some people will say that, you know, it's it's low stomach acid. There, it can be low stomach acid. It can be high stomach acid. There's things like Trin, from what I understand, that seem to stimulate the 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 vagus vagal nerve vagus nerve I, yeah vagus nerve that uh, ca- cause increased stomach acid production. So if you're blasting trend in the off season, trend may be the reason why your stomach's effed up. So maybe don't take trend. Just another thing to consider. So good food choices. Uh, getting fiber in. I take a fiber supplement to help keep keep everything cleaned out. I try to stay with bland, easy to digest foods. A lot of guys, sometimes guys will overdo the fiber. I see, I see that too. The people eat way too many vegetables and way too many, way too much brown rice and oatmeal and, and 
then they have gut issues from that or guys that are pounding protein powders and pounding the quest bars and eat drinking monsters all day long and then wonder why they have acid reflux or why they have diarrhea or why they have gas and bloating you're eating a bunch of crap processed food that you know has sugar alcohols in it and a lot of it that's going to cause you to get gassy and bloat up so maybe that's an issue anyway that's sort of my approach to it i try to take a high level look see what the problem is and then back down from there all right next question is from shreddington shreddington asks since i am competing saturday what's your thoughts on the best practices immediately post show and sunday to avoid the big post show bloat come monday well i'm sorry shreddington i missed your question i assume your show is already over this is what i do I will go out and have a cheat meal after my show for dinner, eat whatever I want. A lot of times it's going to upset my stomach and I really don't want to <laughs> really don't want to cheat again on, on Sunday. If I feel up to it, I might go out for a nice breakfast because I, I love breakfast, a breakfast boy. I love having my bacon, eggs, pancakes, waffles. I may do that. And then I'm just back on plan on Monday. One of the things that I learned from Justin Harris, a lot of guys will do these these reverse diets out of show, shows, which I understand the logic of the reverse diet. It's all well and good. But when you slowly creep up your calories, a lot of people come out of the show with ghrelin at an all-time high. They drop their hormones. They have an estrogen rebound on top of it, and their hunger is just through the freaking roof. And ghrelin's going to win every time. You can have the intention of reverse dieting, but from what I've seen is that most people fail at it because they can't control their hunger post-show. They end up binge eating. I would rather have my clients fill up on good food. So I just push a lot of good food after the show. I give them a lot of clean, healthy food. And you maybe have, you know, maybe have a little bit of fat gain with it. But I promise you it's not going to be as bad from eating chicken and rice. A ton of chicken and rice or beef and rice or steak and rice as it would be if you're pounding pizza and donuts for four weeks straight. So I usually just come out of the show, push the food high right out of the gate. I don't I don't fuck around with a reverse diet because I think people aren't going to follow it anyway. All right, next question here is from user PG1PM5NM6Q. I'm assuming that is a random name that Google has assigned you. What do you think about steroids and fertility, especially with prolonged use? I want to be careful what I say here. Uh, but I think that the whole fertility thing has been vastly overstated. <laughs> I mean, you look at birth control that women take that is a steroidal hormone that they use for birth control. And women come off birth control and get pregnant. I was blasting for five years straight in my late 20s into my 30s. And I got my wife pregnant twice while I was blasting. And I didn't take any HCG, none of that crap. Now, I do know guys that have a hard time afterwards. That was just my experience. But if you look at bodybuilders, the majority of them, I mean, how many kids did Ronnie Coleman have? <laughs> you think that dude was taking HCG and coming off for extended periods of time? I don't. And, but I'm, I'm not trying to discount it. Everybody's different. I, I think there is potential for infertility afterwards, but I think it's more uncommon than people think it is. I would say this, though, it, 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 if you are planning on blasting a ton of gear and you want to have kids, you might want to have the kids before you do so, or maybe set some sperm aside, have it frozen for later. I, I talked to a guy that did that. That may be a smart, smart approach just in case, just in case if you want to have kids later, later on, you can always go, go the IVF. Route that you know, so that's an option. But I, I, I'll be honest with you. I know I, I've got a couple clients that are using PEDs and knocked up their wives. I know several of them. That that's another thing too. Like young dudes think that they can't get the girlfriends pregnant while they're on gear. I promise you, bro. That's usually when it happens. It's when you're not trying. Is when you knock them up. So. I would say proceed with caution. I wouldn't over fear the, the fertility thing. If, if you are planning on having kids, you more than likely can come off and regain your fertility. There's plenty of people that do that. 
I'm not guaranteeing it, so I'm not a doctor. I'm not giving you medical advice. I would talk to your doctor about it to be sure. But I had two kids while I was on. I know plenty of bodybuilders that have had plenty of kids. You know, you just pick, pick, go, go through and look, look at all the old body. I mean, Dorian Yates has a couple kids. Ronnie Coleman has kids. I know Jay Cutler doesn't. I'm just trying to think through past Mr. Olympia's. Arnold has a ton of kids. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of who. Lee, I'm pretty sure Lee Haney has kids. I don't know about any of the current guys. I don't know if they have kids or not. Probably not. But that may be a choice. That may not be from from the drugs. Who who knows? But anyway, I wouldn't overthink it. If you if you want to be cautious, you can do some fertility protocols or maybe just not use gear at all. I kind of went into it with the mindset, and this is what I'll tell people. It's like getting bit by the vampire. Once you get bit by the vampire, you're a vampire forever. So I just went into it with the assumption that I was never going to have kids and I was okay with that. I ended up with two kids, two wonderful kids. I'm happy I have them. But that's sort of my mindset. So just just plan for the worst, hope for the best is what I would say. And assume nothing. But I would say more than likely, you could probably have kids. All right, folks, that's all I got for you today. If you want to support me, please support my sponsor, First Detachment. They are quality supplements formulated by the man himself, Justin Harris. I have a link to their site in my video description below. Discount code AB10 at checkout for 10% off. Thanks for watching. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.